Okay. Well, welcome everyone to our call. This is Joseph Rodriguez from the New York Power Team. I also lead the Mastermind Peer Momentum, which some of our members attending this call are on. Suzanne is spectacular. She led a Power Team meeting two months ago, and this is one of the topics that's very dear to my heart, and using voice, and not just not just the physical voice, but also just really embracing the body-mind connection and really being fully self-expressed. For myself, personally, so some of you know me on this on this journey, the power team or also the mastermind. Um, I used to be a corporate engineer years ago, about 15 years ago, and what I realized at that point was I was very left brain, and I needed to make a shift to, um, I wanted to make a shift to embrace all full parts of myself, you could say. When I left the corporate world in 2001, a lot of people acknowledged me for my voice, so I just decided, decided to go on this path learning, learning about the, the top voice techniques out there, strategies, and I stumbled on something called link letter voice. And um, from book, all the books I'd seen in the bookshelf, in, in the stores, and, and um, this technique was the most extraordinarily powerful in what it did as far as releasing the diaphragm, engaging all these resonant chambers in our body. And for me personally, I was blessed because out of, from working, from, from, from following through and investing some time and energy into learning this process, it's helped me be a lot more expressed than I could ever, ever imagine building the life that I have right now currently. And it's led me down the path of getting deeper into personal development and more. So um, I'm blessed in this call because uh, Suzanne, she attended one of our meetings months ago and one of our members, Anissa, recommended her highly. She led powerfully two months ago. Um, I mean, just the, the, the nature blending both link letter voice with other mind body tools that she has, as well as coming from this atmosphere where she's also been inspired by Tony Robbins and um, um, a lot of other personal development leaders as well is extraordinary. It's very rare that I've ever met, I actually have never met anyone with that combination who's able to bring all that <laughs> together. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm very inspired by it. I'm absolutely very inspired by it. And uh, so Suzanne, I'm gonna give it to you, but I wanna actually make sure that I'm, we're looking at you on the screen, so. Sure, take your time. Yep, because I'm, right now I'm looking at Scott on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks good. Hi, Scott. Hi, Suzanne, so do you, thank you. There she is. So, so, so I think it's based on whoever's speaking on, on the call. That's the person who's being shown. And Aaron also joined the call too as well. Also, well, welcome, Aaron. Excellent. So um, let's get into it. Susan. Oh, I don't see Aaron. I hope I get to see his picture soon. <laughs> his, so, his hi, Aaron. His video is cut out. So he'll, he'll be, hopefully he'll be joining us to call too. And um, I, 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 hi, I, hi, everybody. Great. Thanks, Tom, for being here. And the, the, the great thing about this tool is that we can, we can see each other. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, uh, it's like Skype, but even better than Skype. And we can certainly move around and other techniques you may ask us to take on, Suzanne. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it to you. So would you like to share a bit about your intro, your background, Suzanne? Um, yes. What I'd like to do, actually, is I, I think that I'll probably talk for – I don't want to spend too much time doing this. I think we all have busy days. What I'd like to do is to talk for about 20 or 25 minutes, which may include some actual – exercises. It'll include a brief little bit about myself, um, an introduction to what works and what doesn't work with the voice, and then maybe a little bit of exploration simply with your alignment and your breath, even where we are right here sitting. So what I love to be able to do is to be super pragmatic about how this stuff goes directly from the classroom or from a session like this into your daily lives. It's, it is so useful. And I'm working with a woman who's, um, who's a, uh, an entrepreneur and she's been on Shark Tank twice and she has a TV show that's coming out. Um, and she works with animal products like dog, pet products and she's gonna have a Shark Tank type show for pet products. And she said to me the other day, we had one session. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe how this applies to every single part of my life. Like I was going in to do something with my partner who is a, it's a bit contentious and I found myself focusing on this breathing that you're teaching me. And it was such a, it's such a juice to me to feel the feedback from people. Like 
I, I couldn't be more grateful for your introduction. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. And I probably, you know, I may be sharing a little bit more than um, you may want to know. So mm -hmm. in the second grade, I was so terrified of public speaking that getting up to give a book report caused me to literally have a physiological meltdown and wet my pants in class twice. So somehow I decided to, I, I couldn't do it. Like I could not get up and do the speech. And somehow in the universe's infinite wisdom, I chose to be an actress, right? <laughs> so, you know, way to challenge myself. Um, needless to say, that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, so I, I went into acting and I was very good at voice and speech. And um, I was great at doing dialects and teaching people how to do a dialect or an Irish dialect. Start, you know, I could switch into things out very easily like that. And um, character voices. And uh, very quickly I became a teacher there. Hmm. And I was teaching for about 10 years and people kept mentioning this Linklater voice work thing. And I was like, yeah, cool. You know, I got a lot going on. I don't think I need it. Um, and they're like, no, you'll love this. And what I realized when I was teaching was that I had integrated this work into my own body. But when I was teaching my students, they would take the work that I was teaching them about breathing, which was very old school about like projecting to the back of the room. And yes, I have a very plummy, rich voice and very fake sounding, right? Mm -hmm. So some people were able to integrate this, the teachings of that, that very rigid background, almost like opera type breathing and things like that and become natural. And some people became very rigid. And so I couldn't get to them and I didn't know why. Then I started studying Linklater voice and realized that it's because the stimulus for the voice is always thought. Thought is the beginning of everything in the body, okay? And I'm sure, and this is one of the reasons that um, I think that the integration of the Tony work and the personal development work is so powerful because that's also what they teach, right? Mm -hmm. I keep getting the same lesson from every single modality that I go to, right? Breath is life. You go study meditation. I'm like, hey, I backdoored into that whole breathing and meditation thing by being a voice teacher. Mm -hmm. So I, the thing I'd like to tell you about Linklater Voice is that it's a pragmatic, uh, useful, systematic way of unraveling the uh, tensions and habits and perhaps the so socialization of our bodies and our connection to voice and our connection to being able to express ourselves. Um, a series of exercises that actually unravel those tensions and reveal our own voice, mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to create something with all of those tensions already there. Um, in order to be a Linklater voice teacher, you have to do multiple month long intensives. You have to follow a master teacher around for two years. You have to teach a practice and be evaluated. It is literally like getting a master's degree without the actual degree. So um, I've been doing this for 30 years. And what I'd like to do in this very brief session, in fact, let me just, I'm going to put a timer on because I'd mm -hmm. like to do about 20 minutes mm -hmm. of work and then take some questions, some very specific questions. Sure. I can do that. So, right. so what I'd like to do is to just ask you, wherever you're sitting, to sit on the edge of your chair, right? And I'm going to do some teaching, some, some lecturing kind of, give you some information about the voice. But while we're doing that, we always want to be utilizing net time, no extra time. So while I'm giving you information, you can be also observing yourself and connecting to your own breath and your own body. So what you want to feel like while I'm talking is that there's no part of you that's closed off. So you're sitting on your sits bones, which are those bony parts that if you rode your bike, too long, it would hurt your butt. Or if you were riding a horse bouncing up and down, those bony parts that are on your ass would, would get a little bruised, right? And then just arch your back and collapse your back. Arch your back 
and collapse your back. Now find that middle place where you're neither arching your back nor collapsing your back. And one of the little secrets may be to imagine that there's a balloon coming from the top of your head. And in, in the voice work that we do in the workshops that are coming up, we'll probably spend an hour to an hour and a half on alignment and body awareness. Physical awareness is the first step, right? The other thing you want to do is think of your eyes looking out over the horizon. So you don't want to do this because again, we're working with the voice, which a lot of the apparatus of the voice is in your neck. You don't want to collapse your neck. Hi. So find the length in your neck and bring your cheeks parallel to the ground. So if this is the ground, your cheeks are parallel to the ground. And then let your lips part and you're just going to breathe through your open mouth. Now this may feel odd, but the reason that I'm asking you to do this is because this is the kind of breath that most naturally mimics the breathing that we do when we are engaged in inspired conversation, right? Or inspired speaking. So we don't normally breathe in through our nose and then speak, breathe in through our nose and then speak. So everything that I'm doing is layering onto an, an actual process. So as you're sitting there, just notice if you've stopped breathing. And then if you have, pat yourself on the back, like we do with Tony, and say, good job for noticing, let me breathe, right? So getting the whip out is not going to help you. Put your hand on your belly, one hand on your belly. And then sigh, just a sigh of relief. Just breath, right? Perfect. So I want to tell you a little bit about how the voice works. And as we're, I'm doing this, periodically check in with your breathing. Again, if you feel dizzy at any point, just close your mouth, put your teeth together and breathe through your nose. This is probably more oxygen than you're used to getting and we're not moving around in an aerobics class. So take care of yourself. I don't want you to pass out. So what happens is when, we, when the body is working well, we have a thought that we want to express, right? This could be a very simple thought like hi, or it could be something exuberant, or it could be something filled with rage. But we have this thought. And that thought stimulates the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a beautiful uh, muscle, dome-shaped muscle that is across the whole center of your body. I'm going to point my camera down towards my body now. So it, it runs across the whole body, domed like this. It connects into the ribs, the front ribs, and it connects all the way into the spine. And in that diaphragm is something called the solar plexus. It's a plexus of nerves that is, I think, actually the biggest nerve center in your entire body. Notice if you stopped breathing. And in that nerve center, we receive all of our thinking, feeling impulses. So in a perfect world, that breath draws the diaphragm down, right? The muscles, that, it, that thought draws the diaphragm down. The muscles around the diaphragm, the muscles in the rib cage and the belly, pull the diaphragm down. It doesn't move on its own, okay? And the other interesting thing about the diaphragm is that it's a muscle, it, the process of breathing will happen whether you're conscious of it or unconscious. It's autonomic, right? So you, it's, you can consciously make your breath change patterns, but you typically can't consciously change your heartbeat. You can change the way you blink, but you will unconsciously blink. So that, that's the, the difference, right? Auto, it's um, autonomic and then also conscious. So that's why the spine is important, because the spine is the conduit for our nerves and our thinking, feeling impulses. So the thought, the diaphragm moves down, that creates a vacuum in the lungs, which are these spongy bell-shaped um, organs held inside your rib cage. And the lungs expand, filling up with air. 
And the only way for them to expand is to move down and out because of the hard bony plate of the um, breastbone, right? So in a perfect world, there's no tension in your body. The thought comes in, the breath is stimulated, the lungs expand down and out beautifully. Your belly moves, it moves your organs, your ribs move a little bit depending upon the need that you have to express. And then that air comes up and under the vocal folds. The vocal folds are fleshy folds inside the thyroid, I mean, inside the vocal box that look like this when they're not being in use. When they're in use, the tiny tendons and muscles bring them in alignment with each other and the air comes underneath and undulates them, right? That undulation creates the vibration. And without the resonating spaces in your body, that vibration sounds a little bit like a string being plucked without the guitar being behind it. So it's like, ah, it doesn't have a lot of sound, right? Notice if you have stopped breathing and take a breath. So that vibration then gets resounded or resonated in the, in the sinuses, the oral cavity, and the chest cavity, right? So... What is that? It is the vibration of your thinking, feeling impulse that's been stimulated, brought the breath in, and then it resounds or bounces around the inside of your body to make a rich, full sound. And in that perfect world, there's no tension to stop that vibration. Then it passes out through your mouth and is shaped from that pure emotion into articulate thought. So the lips and tongue then come in contact with each other or the surfaces in the mouth to create words that mean something. So the beginning of everything is that feeling impulse, that need to communicate. So in a perfect world, you have a thought, stimulates the diaphragm, diaphragm expands, the lungs open up, the air comes up, and eat, up under, underneath the vocal folds, the, the mouth then shapes the thound, sounds into a perfect meaning, and I say, hi, Joseph, I'm so glad to see you, and that breath and that thought match. In an imperfect world, we have dual desires. Again, this goes right back to the whole Tony Robbins thing, right? When you have linked up two different emotions to the thing that you desire, right? So you want to be in a relationship and you don't want to get hurt. You want to communicate and you don't want to take a risk. You don't want to be rejected, right? So and particularly in our world, we have uh, become veiled in our communication. So there's a story that I like to tell about this which is um, called the chocolate chip cookie story. <laughs> so go. there's a little boy in the, in the room next to his mother and he is playing quietly and he's having a great time and he's playing with Legos or whatever he's got and he's you know, doing things and he has a need, a deep life and death pang, a need for a chocolate chip cookie. And he goes into his mother and he says, Mommy, I want a chocolate chip cookie now. Because, you know, you can make demands like that when you're four. And his mom looks at him and says, oh, yeah, that's not okay. When you learn how to ask for that chocolate chip cookie nicely, maybe you'll get it. And he's devastated. Oh, he goes out. He doesn't get the chocolate chip cookie. And he ha is really devastated because at four, that is a life and death need, a pang that hits you in your belly. Next day, he's playing. He's in his room. He has a life and death need, a pang for a chocolate chip cookie. And he goes into his mother and he says, before he says anything, he remembers. And he's a smart young man. And he says, mommy, could I please have a chocolate chip cookie? And his mommy says, oh my goodness, yes. Oh, you're so good for learning that lesson. Here's two, right? So what he's learned to do is to suppress his initial impulses, which is okay, that's fine. We live in communities and we live in societies and if we all followed our impulses, it would truly be chaos. I mean, enough people do follow their in impulses inappropriately that it creates a lot of problems. So we, we all understand that, right? I might commit but, but, murder. 
but it's re rewired his physiology in some sense by repeatedly doing that over years, right? Right. Brain, so, brain right. So what we're going to talk about now is how that, well, how, how did he do that? The only way to do that is through your muscles, right? So your muscles, your thoughts are electrical impulses that go through your body, through your nerves and tell you to pick up these glasses or to speak your mind or to lead a class or to um, become a public speaker or to become an actor and to, to say the things you need to say, right? So what happens is those dual feelings work on our muscles. So if, any, if whatever's happening in your mind happens in your body, then both things are happening in your body, right? So he has learned to suppress his initial impulse because it's not right to go into your mom and scream at her and say, I want this right now. Of course, she's going to say no. However, what happens is we become so habituated to that, that we no longer even know what our impulses are and mask so much of what we have to say. We do that in various ways. So right now, what I'd like to ask is for you to think about a time when you wanted to say something or you wanted to laugh. That's a, it doesn't have to be a negative thing, but it should be a strong emotion. Um, you know, you're in a public place and you really want to burst out laughing and you're like at a funeral or you're in church or your um, mother-in-law is just looks ridiculous in the outfit she has on, you have to suppress it. So what is it that you do physically or your boss or your client is really making you angry? What do you personally do physically to stop those impulses? Mm. So if you could call out an answer, whoever, wh whoever wants to answer, what do you do? I'm going to everyone. Um, I think I have more closed in body language. I might look down or sort of contract my muscles. You contract your muscles. What I'm, happens? Well, I'm thinking, of a, I'm thinking of an unpleasant situation being, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being told that I was fired from a job, for example. Right. I, that's great. And just notice as you talk about that, what happens to your facial mask? What happens to your tongue? What happens to your throat? Right. Mm -hmm. Who else? Anybody else? Yes. Um, I make this kind of fist with my thumb inside. Right. And it's sort of like a tension, fear, anger mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. And then I, I shut my eyes and I try to breathe. Wow. Right. So you try to dissipate it. Yes. Right. Cool. Um, any other shares about that? I just get really intense to take a deep breath. Intense. So. I'm going to ask for very specific responses. So intense, what does that mean? I, 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 I feel like my willpower at that moment is just like, I hold it in. Right. Okay. So what I'm asking is all you're doing, you're showing me. So what you're doing is you're saying it looks like you're contracting yeah. your muscles, right? Yeah. What do you feel in your throat when you think about it? Think about really wanting to say what that thing is. What happens in your throat? I feel like, uh, uh, like, like it's, 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 it's stunted for me, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's what what happens with your tongue? It goes, mine goes, mine goes down. Yours goes down. Does anybody touch, press to the roof of their mouth? Anybody swallow? So all of those things are, are intrinsically connected in controlling that impulse. That's not wrong. It's just we need to be aware of those and, and notice that we're not actually able in that moment to express that, that a thinking, feeling impulse, that meaning that lives inside of us, right? So the, um, the problem is that that becomes habituated, right? And we become socialized and we become polite. Sometimes we walk around with that tension all the time. My modus operandi was to smile all the time. Yeah, okay, that's fine. No worries. Yeah, I've got, yeah, that's fine. No, I'll stay late. That's great. No, I can get that done for you right now or whatever it is. No, I'm not upset with you. You know, it's the, it's the, um, it's the and these processes then build muscular habits. Mm -hmm. And then the body being so helpful. 
our psyches and our bodies want to serve us. So they, uh, the next time we're in that conversation and we're going into our boss or whomever it is, whatever the circumstance is for us, we're going up to speak publicly, our body starts responding without our input. And that's how it becomes habituated, right? And the process of um, shifting that is the process of unraveling physical tensions and it's the process of self-awareness. And that's why it's so intrinsically connected to um, personal development work as well, because it is about self-awareness. So, you know, um, as we work through uh, what starts off as the body work, we do a lot of relaxation, we do stretching, we do um, physical awareness, we roll up and down through the spine to become aligned in our spine. And, and then you, be, you have this miraculous feeling of being opened up to the process of your voice. And here's another that thing that's very interesting that we think we speak with our faces and our heads, right? Like our mouth is where we speak. But the truth is that the meaning lives in our bodies. It's a, it's a physiological experience. And when you think of the larger emotions, like, you know, there are phrases that are attached to it, like, oh, they gave me butterflies. It feels like someone punched me in the stomach. Oh, my bot, the bottom dropped out of me. I got a, a gut kick. Um, uh, oh, bite your, bite, your, bite your tongue. Keep a stiff upper lip. All of those things come out of the real process of what we're feeling. It made my heart sing, right? Those kinds of things. Yeah. So um, it's, it's like stuck emotions in the body, right? And that can also lead into if people have studied health, it can lead to disease in a lot of ways too. Over right. a lifetime, years, day in, day out of kind of holding our breath, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Not really. Oh my God. So there's so many there's so many things that dovetail into this, like spirituality, health, Louise Hay, Tony Robbins, um, uh, all of the every spiritual practice in the world. I mean, how long can you live without food? How long can you live without water? How long can you live without air, which is the most important nutrient? And how much time do we ever actually give to thinking about breathing? So there, there's so much to this. My modus operandi brings in our ability to communicate because those unexpressed emotions, though I'm coming from the point of view as an actor, there's a whole therapeutic element to it. Theater, therapy, and theology are intrinsically connected. It is about being in the present, thinking and feeling and listening to your gut or your core or your source or your soul, whatever you want to call it. And that's why we end up doing this strange thing of going into dark rooms with other people and watching people on stage and going through separately emotional changes in a group. So that's what theater is, right? It started way back in, at the campfire and we still are being indoctrinated and edified by processes like going into a Tony Robbins event, like going to a course, like going to the theater, like listening to music. All of those kinds of things are, are very much uh, connected. So let's just do one little thing before I go to questions. Take a little stretch up from where you are because I want you to come out of this experience with at least a little shift in your body and a little shift in your thinking. Circle your head around to the left. Let your jaw drop. Feel the breath come luxuriously into your body. And since we're sitting, you know, you can allow this right now to affect your spine. If you want, there's different ways to do it. Reverse into the other direction. Again, take a deep sigh of relief. <sighs> Come back into alignment. Let your jaw drop. And allow a yawn to happen in your belly. Think of that yawn happening in the middle of your belly. It's a stretch. 
Put your hand on your belly, right between your belly button and the, the sternum or the xiphoid process. Let your jaw drop, feel your head is long and tall, and let the breath come in over your soft tongue and sigh out over your lips. And now just allow a sigh, a river of sound to come out of your body. Luxuriate in your own vibration. <sighs> like a pleasurable moan. Don't even worry about how weird it sounds. <sighs> Collect that on your lips. Um, feel the buzz and the tickling on your lips. Um, 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 uh, and let that go. And now say one, two, three, four, five. One, one two, two, three, three four, five. five. Now just let it happen. Say it the way you would in real life, but let it flow out on the breath. One, two, one, three, two, four, five. five. And now take your hand and use it and throw that sound out in a long lob, like it were a river of sound. One, one, two, two three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, just keep going. One, one two, three, three, four, five. five. And one, now say, two, hey. 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 And sort of rejoice in that. You're seeing somebody you haven't seen in a long time. Hey. 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 Awesome. So let's just stop there. That's my half hour, 25 minute little uh, blurb for you. Um, do you have any thoughts, observations, or questions? I, um, I, just, like, I, just, I, I just think that's great, Suzanne. I wish I could start at every morning with you. <laughs> I'll say that. You can. You can. Let's do it. I'll do it with you. In fact, if you want to do something like that, I'd love to do a free 30 minute awesome. morning call. We can yeah. invite people in, we can pick a time. A lot of us are East Coasters, mm -hmm. 7 o'clock, 6.30, whatever. We could pick a good time oh, so. or even, even later and then just, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, this is, I'm totally. building my, yeah. my uh, business, this part of my business. So I'm happy to just completely give myself over to the process of serving. Yeah. And, and we all need a warm up, right? It's part mm -hmm. of the process. You, you teach yourself how to do this on a regular basis. So doing that would be awesome. So we can <clears> talk <throat> about that. I, I just want to say briefly that, um, and I will open the call for everyone else's chair, but I, it, it's just triggered me. This, this whole process triggered me because it reminded me of where I was years ago, 15 years ago. When I was in college, I was a bodybuilder, right? I did a lot of weight training and, and it's all about impressing people, mm -hmm. holding, holding my stomach in, working on my deltoids and being, being so strong here mm -hmm. but what i realized is that it actually detracted people from from being around me because it was so like stuck up this way holding my breath not being fully expressed when i learned link letter i learned how to let my diaphragm go it was okay to let my, my belly out mm -hmm. and um and i also <laughs> had to re release all the tension from years of bodybuilding on my on my, my my shoulders and uh it really opened the doors for me to be a speaker and do a lot of training and this whole other career path that opened up for me doing mm -hmm. Linklater. It also opened doors for personal development too because it, I was inspired from about Tony and others from doing this work. But um, it's life changing. So I'm going to open the doors for other people to share and ask questions about this process. So everyone, you are all muted now on your end and you're, you also unmute yourself directly. <laughs> Okay, I, we unmuted one person. <laughs> so, anybody else? She's on the phone. Does anyone else have questions for Suzanne? 
Um, I don't really, this is Tom, I don't really have any questions, but it was a great experience. I know, you know, we're just scratching the surface here, but uh, it just feels very liberating and I'm conscious of how I don't do this that often, you know, so, uh, so I appreciate, you know, being let, let into it uh, to feel what it, what it feels like. It's mm -hmm. a pleasure, really. Thank you. What, what did it feel like? And, and uh, what I would like to ask is whenever, if you ever join me again, or if you take one of my courses, or even in this moment, what you're always looking for is specific physiological experiences, because you want to walk away from this with the ability to have a neuromuscular memory of the shift. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing this, you're looking for what is new, different, or unusual, and what are you actually experiencing. So you want more juicy words than it feels great. Although I love the compliments. Um, it, I'm totally, totally selfish that way. Um, you want to look for things like, you know, I felt a warmth or a tingling. I feel vibration in my face. I feel longer. I feel like I take up more space three-dimensionally. I feel colder. I feel hotter. I feel one of my students used to always use like food metaphors. Like she'd be like, you know, my legs feel like spaghetti or I feel like marshmallows or, you know, so you may express in different ways. So long as it's meaningful for you, mm -hmm. that's what you're looking for. So mm -hmm. is there a word or a couple of phrases, Tom, that you could add to that? Um, well, I do feel I'm aware of greater breath, you know, depth of breath going on. I was going to say in my chest, but it actually goes deeper than that. So, you know, I don't often think about this, you know, my torso as a container of breath, although obviously it is. Um, mm -hmm. but, but in in this exercise, I'm really feeling it, which mm -hmm. tells me that I don't think about it very often usually, and I don't experience it very often. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a nice change to feel. Thank you so much. So happy. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Anybody else have want to share their exp their experience? Which, which what I'm gathering from Suzanne is about the experience you're getting out of this, because it is when when you're in the experience of it, you're in the beingness of it, and that allows you to build more of a consistent habit versus being stuck. Okay, then, or being controlled by something that just happened. Mm -hmm. so that's what I gathered by her, her question there. Is I can anybody... tell you something about it. Go for it, Scott. Um, yeah, actually, it's it, this is a really interesting that this came to me today here. Scott, you just froze up. Is, is it just me or is it a, uh, okay, now you're back. Okay. I've been having some problems um, with, my, with, with swallowing and also vocalizing. Hmm. And I thought it was tied to stress. And actually, I also was worried about um, something worse. I actually made an appointment with a gastroenterologist for today. Mm -hmm. At, which I will still go to, but, um, and I, and I also meditate in the morning. And if I do ohms chanting AUM, um, um, I was not able to get that out. I was, and I think it is all tied to anxiety. And when I do get through the, the, ec the exercise portion of my meditation, the Kriya portion, which is primary yama breakfast, the difference is I can get it out afterwards, but I can't get it out before. And in this particular case, um, I was kind of really worked up and kind of stressed out when we sort of got on the call and that re it released a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it. And my voice would have been shaking before I would have been more constricted in my throat. Um, less, you know, I think I'm still having some, uh, you know, a little bit of shakiness on my own, but it, it definitely works. I mean, it's, it's really interesting. I'd like to talk to you more about it. Um, Another I'd, I'd love to talk to you. We can set up a Skype call anytime you like. And I'd love to have you, if you're free on Saturday, come to the, the class because what we did here is a 30 minute little taste. We didn't even do any of the physical work really. So it, it goes so much deeper than this. It's such a great, powerful uh, practice. Um, and, um, you know, just. If you can, there's one on this Saturday and one on the 19th. Possibly the 19th, because this Saturday I've got something. Um, cool. I don't know how we'll just exchange. We'll talk. Listen, yeah, um, absolutely. Scott, Scott, I've seen a shift from you so earlier, an hour ago on this call to where you are now. I see a huge shift in terms of how you've opened up already. And uh, 
and from my experience of doing this work for years ago, it's, 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 you, you, you get a taste of it in half an hour, but it really does take the muscles, the body, like laying down on the ground, there are a whole bunch of things that, are, that happen mm -hmm. throughout this process that really open up all the resonance chambers in the body and, and much more. It's, it's, it's about the different, um, red, asking all the different registers. At the parity meeting we had a month, month, couple, month and a half ago, Suzanne actually went into all the different registers she was able to access in her, in her, in her facial mask. And there's no other process I know that does this in this way. I mean, I've, I've done singing training. I've done a lot of other training in the past, but there's nothing else like Linkletter. Mm -hmm. The way Suzanne teaches, it combines with other mind-body, other modalities she also teaches, including dance and so forth. Yeah. So it's, it's really awesome. It really is. One more question that just so you might, other people may be pertinent to. How does this differ from Alexander Technique? This was actually developed with Alexander Technique. Mm -hmm. So my master teacher, who was the protege of Iris Warren, who was the protege of the guy who taught in the King's Speech, the guy from the King's Speech, that film. Right. So there's a lineage that goes back. Kristen saw the absence of the actual uh, depth of thinking and body connection. And she was with Shakespeare and Company in, um, Mass in uh, Massachusetts um, and worked with Linklater, with uh, Alexander Technique teachers because Alexander Technique technique is a modality of moving into your body and using your body economically and releasing the tensions. Like when you work with a trained Alexander Technique teacher, it's as if they're doing something to you, but they're bringing energy to your body and literally you feel like your cells and body take up more space once you're done. So this, the work that I do is intrinsically connected with that. It's mm -hmm. not the actual practice of it, and I'm not trained in that modality, but I have had coursework in that for 30 years, off and on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thank you. Great that you know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome, yeah, totally. And anybody else have questions for Suzanne? Anything else you've got out of this experience before we begin, before we begin closing out? Okay, well, Suzanne, I think that's pretty much it. Yes, I was on the call too. I, yes, I muted you before. I'm going to unmute you because you have some uh, other background noise. Oh. Do you have any questions, Yes, Em? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Perfectly. Hi. Yeah, sorry. I am in Turkey and we, you know, I know that you guys changed the time and we didn't. So, unfortunately, I'm on the call since only three minutes. So, I. Uh, yeah, because of the time difference, then uh, I just noticed that it's not going to be at six o'clock my time, but five. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you have a recording of the session that I can actually listen to later. Yep. We'll, or no? We'll, we'll put it out there. If you're on the Power Team, in your Power Team group, Facebook group, I'll put it up there. I'll put it on YouTube sometime this afternoon. Yes, and so you'll have access to it. Thank you. And you'll, um, you'll let us know, like you'll send us an email when as to how to access it. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. So, okay. Great. So, so, so if you're on the Power Team site, I'll I'll email the uh, YouTube link for this this afternoon, so you'll have access to it. I just muted you out. Yes, I'm just now. And um, yeah, of course. And Suzanne has two workshops this month. She's giving a special discount to members of the Power Team community. Um, do you want to just mention that real briefly, Suzanne? Sure. Uh, the The workshops are uh, this Saturday from five to I mean from ten a.m to about six o'clock, there'll be an hour break, and we will delve very deeply into the body and the connection to the body, the breath, and the um, initial connection to sound. The second workshop will work on that, but then we will also spend a lot more time on the idea of vibration. So you could take each workshop separately, or you could take them together. Um, this work is very much like working out. It's not going to change in one session. It's a process like yoga or like, I mean, you can always go deeper. You can find more like Joseph. I'm sure that as we work together, you'll be like, oh, look, that's even different than it was before. So um, it's a very powerful process. The class is usually cur or currently $150 for a six hour class, which is super reasonable. And um, we're giving a power team discount of $50 off of the class. There's a link on the um, power team uh, page for that, 
or you can uh, call me. My phone number is 215-704-3825 if you have any questions. My email is my name, Suzanne Selby at gmail.com is my email. So it's S-U-S-A-N-N-E-S-U-L-V-Y at gmail.com. And I really am passionate about this work. So I'm not so worried about, you know, converting people to clients. I want to help you and I will have up you know, a short session with you privately, like if Yasmin in Turkey wants to set up a call with me or someone sees this on the New York Power Team page and we wants to talk to me for a half an hour um, or have a little mini session via Skype, I am really happy to do that. If there's anybody who literally cannot afford the class, there's a way that we can barter or you can um, volunteer to help set up or something like that. I, I am absolutely committed to helping with that. There's also, um, I may not actually do it on this first week, but um, I also teach chakra, chakra dance, which is another great modality for opening up your body and connecting and healing just living in life or past traumas. And so I'll be doing a, uh, an introductory workshop on the 19th in the evening and possibly on the 5th, depending upon how many people can make it. So if you can make this Saturday or November 19th, and then I'll continue to make, uh, to add uh, future classes. That's really great, Suzanne. Awesome. This technique for me has changed my life um, when I started this 15 years ago. And for me, it's, it's the first piece of like unraveling the onion. Like there were all these layers of like holding on to all this stuff, trauma, and uh, mm -hmm. just like closing up our bodies. And it just, once, one, for me, when I started unleashing that part of myself, it led, it led me down this path of shifting my career in a, in a big way to doing what I love right now. So I, I really honor this work. And link letter technique, the way you teach especially, is, is uh, something that's very unique. And only, there are only a few qualified people in the world who are able to teach it the way you can teach it. So we're super excited. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. And, and, I, and I see my own patterns still come up when, when, I, when I communicate. And so I, I know that it's something that I've, I need to still work on. So I'm looking forward to working with you and being at the workshop too as well. So November 5th, November 19th are the two dates. We'll put them out there. This is just kind of the power team. And I'll put this video on YouTube so we can all access it later on. Whoever, mm -hmm. whoever chooses to. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you in this call. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll, we'll connect with you soon. Thanks, Suzanne. Call me. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.